Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of the NASCAR Heat 5 Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day. Today we go racing here at Phoenix in both the Xfinity Series as well as the Cup Series. No announcements in today's episode. I thought about maybe announcing Kurt Busch's replacement and the new paint scheme for that one car for next season, but we're going to hold off on that for just a few more episodes now. As we come through though, here into the Xfinity Series, jumping right into the action today. More of a chill episode here on the NASCAR Heat 5 Career Mode at Phoenix Raceway. Last time we came to this racetrack Jimmy Johnson won his eighth championship and then of course retired and handed over that 48 car to Alex Bowman now as we had Kyle Busch here in the number 20 car the star car here Joe Gibbs racing in the Xfinity series in today as he started just outside the top 10 here in Phoenix as he dives down towards turns one there behind the uh, 07 there of Ray Black Jr. on the outside as well as uh, of the 99 of Josh Balicki the 21 of Alfredo would get up his inside those who went down the back straightaway Austin Sindrick up there in P1 as he went down into turns three as now Kyle falling down the order just a little bit here on this opening start in the LS Tractor 200 at Phoenix Raceway as it comes through crossing the line there going three wide up the middle there between uh, Ray Black Jr. as well as Anthony Alfredo as he dives down into uh, turn one now so making a little bit of progress here as he was able to get back down to that bottom lane and on the exit of the corner sure enough he clears the 07 of Ray Black Jr. there down the back straightaway so he comes through now a little bit later, he actually gotten uh, some pressure from Alfredo, who was working his way forwards there as he was now on the outside of Balicki. So the car really wasn't looking as strong as we had maybe anticipated by the first few laps of this race here in Phoenix. As Kyle dives into three, going to go three wide through three and four there, as he's going to maybe lose a position to the 21 as well as the 99. Now as he's still side by side with Balicki as he comes through to cross the line. So not the greatest start here in Phoenix for Kyle now as he went down into the corner. We came through a little bit later though. He had actually caught and spread out a little bit now as Ross Chastain actually was end up, ended up blowing an engine right in front of Kyle Busch there. He would avoid it there and continue on his way but that was one uh, bit of a moment, a very close call. But then Kyle's car really started to fall off as this race went on to the point where Timmy Hill was able to run down Kyle Busch as he came through at a turn four, slipping and sliding there, moving up the track and now Timmy Hill gets to the bottom as he goes down the front straightaway towards turns one there was contact there between Kyle Busch and Timmy Hill as well and he also gave up a spot to Jesse Little and then continued to fall down the order the car just drastically took a turn for the worst and Kyle was falling down the order very quickly the 98 of uh, Todd Gilliland there you saw him make a pass on Kyle as it goes down now the back straight away towards turn three just continuing to fall down the order unfortunately here in Phoenix in the LS Tractor 200 as he came through out of turns four he actually gets into the outside wall there after he's losing the back end of the car and it's just a disaster from this point on now as we came through towards the final moments of this race losing more positions to a driver like Ryan Sieg and then the 36 of Alex LeBay was putting on the pressure as well as we went down the back straightaway into turn three so Kyle just having a terrible race here for his Xfinity Series debut this season in the career mode so he came through to the final lap down the back straightaway towards turns three for the final time a very very rough day for Kyle Busch to say the least as he comes through out of turns four he's going to hold off Jeremy Clements at least as he comes through to cross the line here in in Phoenix for, like I said, a really rough day in P24 here in Phoenix. So very unfortunate for Kyle to have such a terrible race. Uh, but now, of course, we've got to just focus on the Cup Series race here. As you see, though, the finishing order on your screen. Brandon Jones there in uh, P11. All guy are up in seventh. And the winner was Austin Cindric. Zane Smith came up uh, in the runner-up finish there of second place. Uh, of course, replacing Noah Gregson in that nine car this season. As Gregson has made that jump up to the 77 car uh, for his rookie season here in the Cup Series now. As we get ready, though, to go green for the Cup Series here at Phoenix. A track that we actually had a good chunk of success at in the last uh, trip to this racetrack where we didn't qualify great but we had a top five finish so definitely have some high hopes coming into this one here today so we come through though to start our qualifying lap where the goal was a 26.069 as we dive down into turns one. I don't like to be right down on that yellow line on the entrance or center of the corner and we sure enough come through out of turns two. The car actually gets tight there and I get into the outside wall here on the qualifying lap so immediately I know we just completely threw away our good uh, chance of a good qualifying effort and we dive down into three and four trying to get everything that I can on the exit of the corner and it's not going to be a great lap of course now after hitting that wall 26.630 and we qualify 
supply all the way down in P20 here. So not the effort we were looking for in qualifying. All my fault there. I messed up the lap. Very straightforward. Eric Jones, Bubba Wallace, uh, Kyle Larson down there, what, uh, 24th through 26th. Uh, Eric Almorella, really rough qualifying effort for him. He's down in the 32nd position now. Uh, so not what you expect to see out of Eric Almorola. And then we got Noah Gregson, the rookie, in 22nd. Chase Briscoe, 19th. And uh, on pole, uh, well, there you see Christopher Bell actually up in P6. But on pole, we got the Phoenix King of Kevin Harvick now as we get ready to go green here for the Fan Shield 500 at Phoenix Raceway. Last time we came to this venue, Jimmy Johnson was crowned an eight-time Cup Series champion. Now, uh, after he was able to beat Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, as well as Joey Logano all in that championship fight. Of course, Johnson no longer in the Cup Series here in the career mode, so we're not going to have the opportunity to see him anytime soon, uh, but certainly what a moment it was when he was able to pull off that championship there. As you see Kyle Busch starting at the back of the field after failing, or after crashing during qualifying, I should say. Now, it's Tyler Reddick. He's not uh, nearly as fast as expected, so he's actually starting towards the back of the field as well now as we're ready to get going here in Phoenix Raceway. Kevin Harvick leads the field to the green flag, which is now underway here in Phoenix. We start right behind the 41 of Cole Custer side by side with his brand new teammate of Chase Briscoe, who, of course, is a rookie this season, along with drivers like Noah Gregson, as well as Harrison Burton in the 77 and the 96 car. Now as we come through, Gregson actually just behind myself right now as we go down this back straightaway towards turn three. And as we dive down into the corner. Gregson actually going to get aggressive. He sends it into the left side of us now as we left the door open. Gregson being ultra aggressive. Not surprised by a driver like him to do that. And unfortunately that moved me up into Logano as well. So there was multiple contacts right there. And Gregson is able to get ahead of us as we dive down into turns one. But in my opinion it was way too early to be so aggressive on lap one. Can someone please explain to me like what the he was doing right there? There you heard just a little bit of frustration in my voice now as we battle side by side with Gregson down into turns three there as we try to get back ahead of him. Logano down here in 17th place. Bubba Wallace has moved himself up into 20th place now as we go down this front stretch. Contact there with Gregson through the dog leg there now as we go down towards the corner. So a little, little bit of uh, frustration being taken out of course with Noah Gregson now as we came through though a little bit later looking to the inside now Ryan Newman who had gotten passed by these drivers like Noah Gregson and whatnot and uh, sure enough he would join in on the party as well and be able to clear Ryan Newman on the exit of turn two now in the Fiat Shield 500. Now as we try to close in on the back of Logano as well as Gregson who's making some quick moves here though as he's definitely uh, showing a little bit of speed and potential in that 77 car here today. Now as we come through passing Logano very easy pass there on the 22 as we kind of seem to just be following the 77 of Noah Gregson through the field. Sure enough, we follow him all the way past the 17 now of Chris Busher here on lap 6. So we pass him now up into P16 as we continue to just click off positions. But then, sure enough, we get a chance to pounce on the 77 now of Noah Gregson into 3. And we actually go up the inside of Ryan Blaney as well. We clear Gregson and now try to battle up that inside and maybe pass Ryan Blaney now as Kyle Larson continues to work his way through the field. And Larson, so far this season, hasn't been great in qualifying, but he's had some really good race pace which has caught me off guard because I have control of the driver ratings and I can confirm he's running a lot better than I would expect him to be running now in these races as we also would actually get to the outside now of the 37 of Ryan Priest and then we would make a pass on him as well. He is going to fight back on the inside on the exit now of turns four as we go down side by side through the dog leg. Nine laps to go here in stage one as Kevin Harvick continues to lead stage one now as he is still winless in the career mode and you know I thought about changing his driver ratings around but his driver rating is actually really good here in this game so it's really been a surprise that he has not won yet now as it came through on lap 12 now running down drivers like Alex Bowman there in the 48 who seems to be fading as this first stage goes on so we get to the back of him and it looks like it's going to be a very easy pass because we have no problem getting to the inside of Alex Bowman into turn three and we're just going to breeze right on by the 48 of Alex Bowman. So now up into P12, not in the top 10 yet, but we clearly have the speed to be running in the top 10. It's just about getting up there, of course, due to the poor qualifying effort that we had there after getting into the outside wall. But uh, Christopher Bell would actually take the lead here in Phoenix with three laps to go in stage one. A bit of a surprise to see Bell leading, but here he is running up front in Phoenix now with Ross Chastain actually in the second position. We come to two laps to go on the stage, and we were continuing to close the gap, but then the caution comes out for the first time here today 
at Phoenix Raceway, so a couple laps early and stage one, obviously, and uh, Christopher Bell is going to get a playoff point and the stage victory, of course, now is Bubba Wallace up there on P21, Blaney down in 22nd, Jones in 23rd, not what you expect to see out of him in that new Hendrick car, and Tyler Reddick currently down in the last position as there was a pre-race report that he was uh, certainly struggling with speed into this uh, Phoenix weekend. So, we come into the paint lane for two cans of fuel four tires. I did not make any adjustments there because I was really liking the handling of the car, and we get very fortunate on the pit lane. We actually gain three positions as Cole Custer, he loses three positions. So now we're going to be lining up P9 for the restart. Now, uh, Stage 2 is officially underway at Phoenix Raceway in the Fion Shield 500, and Christopher Bell looking for his very first career win here in the career mode. Leads away down into turns 1. He obviously just pulled off that Stage 1 victory, and now he tries to do the same here in Stage 2 and hold off Brad Keselowski as as well as Ross Chastain. Ross Chastain has had some speed so far in that 42 car. Quite hasn't uh, had the best finishes to show for it, but he's definitely showing some speed in that Chip Ganassi racing car, and I would expect to see the same throughout the rest of the season. Of course, his teammate of uh, Kurt Busch just pulled off the victory at Las Vegas a few episodes ago, just fresh off the announcement that he will be retiring from the career mode this season there. A little bit of smoke from the 19 from that contact there, but he saves it now as we come through the center of the corner. But so many questions about who's going to replace Kurt Busch in the career mode, and that announcement will be coming pretty shortly now as we dive down trying to get up the inside of Kevin Harvick who's been fading ever since he lost the lead in stage one now as we're going to be three wide up the inside of Truex's Harvick as well as we come through to cross the line three by three actually now as we're three wide now with Chase Elliott and Denny Hamlin as we dive down into the corner. So Truex now and Harvick settle out side by side. And Truex might clear Harvick on the exit of the corner. Yes, he does. And now we're going to be able to get back, though, in front of the nine of Chase Elliott. So we're just side by side now with Denny Hamlin, our teammate. And actually, we clear him into turn three and get right to the back of the four car of Harvick. So running P8 here, and hopefully we can kind of settle out here and make some moves. And sure enough, we get to the inside of Kevin Harvick on lap four. Kyle Larson now up to P9 as he continues to claw his way through the field. And just kind of like the last episode of feels like Larson was just following me uh, towards the front of the field and then maybe he's going to pass again. Hopefully not. Hopefully we'll be the one leading this race now as we come through clearing Harvick now for that sixth position. As there's actually smoke up ahead as we go down the back straight away into turn three. It's Ross Chastain who has just blown a right front tire. Caution's out. He slams into Truex and we're going to get some contact as well now but the caution is out. Ross Chastain can confirm this tire failure will DNF him from the race. So Chastain goes from being a potential win contender today to being completely out of this race in the Fan Shield 500 at Phoenix Raceway. So very unfortunate for a driver like Ross Chastain in his first season in a very competitive Cup Series car, but now Christopher Bell and Keselowski lead the way back to the green flag here in Stage 2. Still a lot of time to go. Stage 2, very long here in Phoenix, and I actually move up the track quite a bit there because the car did not take off due to that restart glitch, but it actually took off a lot better than it usually does. So we actually got away with uh, one there because we could have been falling down to like 15th if the car had kind of just been really slow. Now, is there going to be three wide between Byron Elliott and Truex down towards turn? three and I back off a little bit early saying okay you guys can have some time to settle it out but there's still three wide as Cluster forced it up the inside of Bell or Byron and then sure enough we come through getting into the back of Truex just a little bit 18 laps to go now in the second stage and we would continue to battle with William Byron we actually get into the back of him through turn three now in lap 10 and out of turn four now he gets sideways a bit of a bump and run there from myself and we make it work because we now clear him with 17 laps to go in stage two for that eighth position and then Byron tried to battle back to my inside didn't quite have enough and then I put the attack on Martin Truex Jr. now into turn three and we're going to try and take over the seventh position now as we exit turn four he's going to fight back on that outside now to so come through to cross the line just 15 laps to go in stage two as he gets clear into turn one but I'm going to send it a little bit deeper into the corner so that way we can uh, try and fight for that position but sure enough Truex not going to give up much ground either now as we are going to continue to battle side by side and allow Matt Benedetto and the five others in front of him to drive away right now as we dive down into the corner. De Benedetto has had some speed in this career mode, but he's had so much bad luck now as we clear Truex out of turn four, but now we would put the attack on Matt De Benedetto down into turn three on lap 15, and now we're going to try and make an easy pass on him for that sixth position now as we come through out of the corner. Now De Benedetto's actually going to battle back on the exit of the corner. I thought we had him clear. Didn't quite become the actual reality. Now as we go down towards turn one, we should be able to clear him through the center of 
this corner and sure enough he's gonna fight back through the center of the corner but we will actually get clear right there on the exit of turns two and then sure enough now on lap 19 Kyle Larson up into second place in front of Chase Elliott as he's trying to run down Christopher Bell with eight laps to go on the stage but I have run down this next group of cars and we try to put the attack on Cole Custer who now puts the attack on Brad Keselowski up the inside of him we nearly get into the back now of the two of Keselowski and attack to his outside as we come through to cross the line less than 10 laps to go here in the second stage now as Chase Elliott's trying to put some pressure on Kyle Larson for that second position as we come through side by side with Keselowski out of turns two but we're going to have the momentum to clear Keselowski down this back straightaway and now insert our car into the top five here as we try to run down Cole Custer and maybe make a move on him as well and get into P4 before the stage ends here as we come through to cross the line there now as we sure enough on lap 24 right to the back of the 41 of Cole Custer Larson kind of holding up everybody right here now as we look up the inside of Custer into turn three approaching just three to go in the stage but the caution comes out again at the end of stage two and it's going to be P5 here as Custer barely had the edge on us now as we get awarded P5 and stage two Matt Benedetto rounds up the top 10 and Christopher Bell has dominated since he's taken the lead he has won stage one as well as stage two Bell in position to get potentially his first win of his Cup Series career here today. Chase Briscoe is going to join Ross Chastain in being out of this race as he is the reason for the caution. So Briscoe, Chastain out here in Phoenix. Unfortunate to see a rookie like Briscoe struggle like that here in today's race. Now as we gain one spot though to start this third and final stage on the pit lane, the green flag is out now in 32 laps remain up uh, immediately. I give a bump to the back of the 43 of Kyle Larson as we dive down into the corner. Elliot, I thought was going to make a three wide for a moment. Sideways goes Kyle Larson, but his dirt track experience pays off and he makes a marvelous save now as we come through down this back stretch side by side with the 41. There was a check up there and I got into the back of the 43 again and into turn three. He goes sideways a little bit again. A lot of smoke there from that 43, but he hangs on there as that was, I mean, my fault both times getting into the back of him, but I mean, it's just a racing situation now as we come through down this front straight away side by side with our teammate of Kyle Busch, the two-time Cup Series champion here as we come through the center of one and two and the car just did not take off like I was expecting it to here in this third and final stage because now Kyle is putting the fight to our inside as we dive down towards the corner and sure enough, in turns three, he's actually going to be able to clear me. So now we've dropped down to P6. Noah Gregson, the rookie, stepping up the performance today. We had that run in with him earlier in the race a couple times and sure enough now though, he finds himself up in P7 trying to take P6 away from me here as we come through turn one and two and sure enough he gets ahead of us but we have such a good exit right there that we're going to be able to get clear of Gregson down this back stretch and hold on to that sixth position as right now Christopher Bell continues to lead over second place of Chase Elliott. Cole Custer having another good run in Phoenix like he did last season in the finale as he runs P3 Larson fourth. Kyle Busch fifth in this and group of top five drivers all started to drive away from me though as this uh, opening portion of this third stage went on. You see on lap 58 they were gone in front of me and then we were driving away from seventh on back so i was kind of on an island of my own at this point in the race and then sure enough though as lap 60 comes around we start to actually reel these guys back in larson kyle was just trying to battle it out in front of us for fourth and fifth but with 18 laps to go i could see that gap starting to close as i was running them down like i said as christopher bell continues to lead not as dominant in this third and final stage as he's not really pulling away very much from chase elliott in that nine car for hendrick motorsports there very well could be some Hendrick Motorsports news coming up here in the career mode as well. Larson very well outperforming that car he's driving. He's definitely proving like he might be worth putting in a top car like an HMS car now in this career mode now. So keep an eye out for that now as it came through down the back straightaway into turn three continuing to close that gap to Kyle Busch as well as Larson. Now as I was looking at the feel and tires a lot and I was thinking you know what we don't have the speed to win this race with 15 laps to go but we could maybe get ourselves out front with a undercut here on the pit lane so I was deciding you know what we're gonna come into the pit lane on lap 64 I decided to make uh, the risky call maybe a caution could come out but you know what we're gonna take the risk anyways put two right side tires on the car and just a splash of feel and hope that we can use the tire advantage to actually get ourselves in front of Christopher Bell and whatnot uh, assuming that they're gonna stay out quite a bit longer so we should be able to use this to our advantage and maybe come out in front of those drivers and have the lead when this pit cycle uh, goes through and hopefully only have to hang on for just a few laps now as we enter back in P37 uh, as we come through just in front of the 22 of Joey Logano who's had a very subpar day as we came through to start lap 69. Nice. Now 10 laps to go is all we got here in Phoenix. 
Still nobody coming to the pit lane yet. And you see a huge group of cars right in front of us. Uh, Bubba Wallace right at the back end of that pack. Now Alex Bowman in the 48 up there in the mix. And I believe maybe the 88 of Eric Jones is up there as well. Sure enough, we come through on lap 71 of 78. Now Denny Hamlin in this group as well. Some very strong cars having rough days. But you see now some drivers coming into the pit lane. Now as we go down the smack straight away. So keeping that in mind for the next time around. I don't want to be on this bottom lane and potentially get into the back of somebody. Now as we get up the inside of Denny Hamlin. He's having a very rough race. We pass him there. Now as we come through out of turns forward. Looking at the back now of Ryan Newman. As I move up to the high line. Knowing that some drivers are going to definitely pit right here. Maybe the majority of them are actually going to come in there. Is Eric Jones in the 88? He is going to come in along with Bubba Wallace, Ryan Newman. Some of them stay out now as we come through out of turn two. But sure enough, the tire advantage would pay off because we come through down the front straightaway. We pass Cole Custer, who was up in the mix. And now that really boosts my confidence, thinking, okay, we're going to be in a good position here. Sure enough, we come through the next time around, and we're going to pass the leader of Christopher Bell with five laps to go here in Phoenix. And he's actually able to stay on the inside of Custer. I was hoping Custer was going to clear him. Unfortunately, he does not. And I know that uh, Bell has a huge tire advantage right now compared to us. So it's going to be very hard to hold him off. I was really hoping Custer was going to be able to get clear of him. And sure enough, Bell gets to the back of us very quickly as we exit turns four. So now we just have to spend the next four laps defending here and hold on for a potential race win. We would get to the back now of Corey LaJoy, who's the lap down. Very close quarters with him. We get up his inside, but now taking the lead, leading the way with three laps to go here in Phoenix Raceway, clearing LaJoy. Unfortunately, Bell, he gets to the inside of LaJoy as well as we dive down through turns one and two. But now Bell, he actually he sneaks up the inside through the center of the corner. He got such a good run there. And sure enough, we're going to be side by side on the exit of turns two for the lead here in Phoenix, approaching just two laps to go. Custer right behind us. If something goes wrong, as we're side by side through three and four. Bell looking for his first win, and so is Cole Custer. I'm looking for my third career win in our second season. Now, as we come through to cross the line, all three of us are in our second season. We were rookies last season, and now here we are battling for the victory. Now, as we come through turn one and two, and now Bell, I got such a bad turn one that Bell is going to get clear. Reagan in the way as we exit turns two. The car was so tight right there. A lap and a half to go for Christopher Bell looking for win number one. Now, as Custer is going to go up the inside of Reagan, I'm going to do the crossover three wide up the inside and we repass Cole Custer and now we're going to have one last chance to maybe beat Christopher Bell for his first win now. White flag in the air here in Phoenix Raceway. Bell has about a two car length lead as we close that margin down into turn one and two. Very aggressive there on the entrance but I'm so tight right here on the exit of the corner that I have to get out of the throttle to make sure we don't hit the wall. Half a lap to go. Bell pulls away a little bit now as I dive down into turn three. One last dash at Bell and we run into the back of Bell but he gets uh, control of the car and he's going to hang on for his very first career win here at Phoenix Raceway now as we come up just short in a second place finish there as I gave him the bumper in turns three and it just wasn't enough maybe I should have hit him in the left rear quarter panel or something uh, but I was trying to get down there under him and I just I, I just drove right into the back of him and unfortunately it just didn't quite work but what a battle right there with the Christopher Bell as well as Cole Custer uh, Bell had a huge tire advantage so it was expected there for him to beat us but now we have a post-race interview with Jay Cook Good day for you in Phoenix, Gary. You've had a strong start to the season, and you were so close to the win there. What would you do differently next time? Um, I'd hit him in the left rear quarter panel instead, I guess. I mean, yeah, I mean, I had to move him to win. Um, he had so much fresher tires right there that I that there was such a small chance of me holding him off, and sure enough, he was able to get to my inside, and I had nothing for him. And the car was just so tight at the end for some reason. I'm not sure why, but it was like it was, I just couldn't turn on the exit of turns too, especially there. Uh, but yeah, I would have hit him in the left rear instead. Maybe just I would have turned him if I had to. Uh, but I tried to just hit him in the back bumper, uh, and he didn't even move. So that was very unfortunate. But overall, second place, a good day for us, uh, and still an affiliate teammate one at least. But overall, yeah, I mean a good day. All right, so there you heard the post-race interview between myself as well as Jay Cook. And as always, if you guys enjoyed this episode, you do know what to do. In the next one, we have the truck series back, so we'll have a subscriber in the truck at Atlanta Motor Speedway. So all three series going in the next episode between the trucks, Xfinity, Xfinity series, as well as the Cup series here. As we're going to check the playoff grid for both Xfinity and Cup. So Austin Sindrick now inside the playoffs guaranteed with that victory at Phoenix here on the Xfinity side. Zane Smith there in the second final spot in the playoffs. But on the Cup Series side, Hamlin, Logano, Christopher Bell now, and then Kurt Busch all locked into the playoffs currently as Larson all the way up in ninth. He's having an incredible comeback so far to NASCAR's Harrison Burton, a rookie, finds himself in the playoffs so far as Custer, Benedetto, Briscoe, Bubba Wallace, Trastain, the five drivers on the outside looking in very close right now. But that will do it for this episode. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching, everybody, and have a great day.